Hey guys, I wish you a happy new year 2023. My name is Michael and in this video we are going to take a look at what's in the pipeline for us in 2023, what distros are expected etc. So let's get started. Canonical will again release two interim versions or STS versions if you would like. These will probably bring new GNOME versions again and thus further refine the Ubuntu desktop. The latest Linux kernel available will most likely be included as well as whatever apps are currently available. It could also be that Canonical will bring another major technical change in 23.04 which can then be finalized in 23.10 before it reaches the market in the next LTS version Ubuntu 24.04. I don't think major change will be brought in the latest STS version because of the time span for the next LTS version then it might be too short. So I am guessing that if something bigger comes along it will appear in Ubuntu 23.04 and possibly be refined in 23.10. In 23.10 there are only minor changes to be expected. The forks will come with fresh desktops. But the latest flavor, Ubuntu Unity, will bring Unity 7.7 .7 with version 2304. This is the first Unity version in years, which for the first time not only brings error corrections, but also innovations and visual changes. Ubuntu 2304 will be released on April 20th and Ubuntu 23.10 in October. Fedora 38 and Fedora 39 both will once again drive development forward and always bring the latest and greatest available apps, kernel and desktops. You can be sure that the latest version will always come, especially when it comes to GNOME Shell. We can also expect support for unified kernel image UKI with Fedora 38. This should further secure the boot process. Also, OS3 native container will come. With the switch to native containers, OS3 system users will work with generic container images in the future. Fedora will also run on mobile devices such as the PinePhone. Here we can expect Fedora 38 to make its first notable move. Fedora 38 will be released in April and Fedora 39 in October 2023. The publication dates communicated in advance are not set in stone but only possible planning dates. Let's get to the armored cruiser among the Linux distros. The Debian project will release Debian 12 Aka Bookworm. According to all experience and foresight it will be so far in summer. This refreshes Debian stable again. For Debian stable users everything is being modernized. For users of other distros Debian 12 brings nothing new. This is because Debian stable takes a long time to prepare. Testing is almost slowly frozen up over a period of around about one year resulting in a new stable version. If you use Debian 11 you will not only get newer LTS kernel but also generally fresh packages and apps as well as newer desktops from the point of Debian's view. Traditionally, a new Debian release arrives exactly when it's ready. So there is no release date. Based on the experience with previous versions, you can expect the release of Debian 12 during the summer. OpenSUSE Leap 15.5 is expected to be the last version of Leap 15. Leap was made binary compatible with SUSE Linux Enterprise SLE with a lot of effort. However, the SLE basis will not be further developed by SUSE but replaced by the Adaptive Linux platform ALP. For Leap 15.5 we can expect everything that the SLE service pack brings. The Linux desktops like KDE and GNOME may also be refreshed again. This was actually the goal of Leap, a stable enterprise base with fresh desktops. The OpenSUSE Leap 15.5 roadmap is available anyway firmly. The release date was set to June 7, 2023. The Soren project will release version 17. This raises the substructure to Ubuntu 2204, which is then already more than one year old. But with Soren, it's not about the latest packages, but about the most stable possible infrastructure with a nicely adapted desktop. 
In all probability, Soren OS 17 will appear again in different versions, whereby for the Pro you have to pay a price, but receiving more pre-installed apps and well-designed desktop concepts, e.g. Mac OS or Windows 11. Customers of the Pro version also receive support that covers the installation. By purchasing the Pro version, the project should be ultimately be supported financially. Linux Mint 21.2 and 21.3 will be regular Linux Mint 21 point releases. However, these do not change anything in the Ubuntu LTS substructure, but maintain the rolling software delivery model of Cinnamon Desktop and the X apps. So we can always expect new Cinnamon versions that bring improvements and innovations. The same applies to the X apps, which the Linux Mint project maintains. The next major version of Linux Mint will be version 22, which will then be built on top of Ubuntu 24.04 LTS. But we'll talk about that in more detail about a year from today. Linux Mint 21.2 will be released in June and Linux Mint 21.3 in December 2023. In addition to the two versions of Linux Mint Ubuntu Edition, a new version of Linux Mint Debian Edition LMDE could also be released. In the second half of the year with LMDE 6, the Debian 12 basis could also be find its way into Linux Mint. This complements the Debian stable base with the rolling release model of Cinnamon and X apps. While the Debian packages traditionally age, Linux Mint always kept its desktop and apps up to date. Although LMDE 5 with Debian 11 base was released in early 2022, LMDE 6 could be released in late 2023 as Linux Mint developers accelerated development on LMDE. While LMDE previously waited several weeks for a new Cinnamon version and was therefore several weeks behind the Ubuntu version, it is now only a few days. So it could be that we can already expect LMDE 6 in the last quarter of 2023. Otherwise, LMDE 6 will be a case for the video in a year from today. That's 2024. MX Linux will jump with version 22 to Debian 12 basis. The Debian stable platform will also modernize all components used by MX Linux. Similar to LMDE, Debian stable serves as a stable foundation. But unlike LMDE, MX Linux does not deliver its own desktop, but rather adapt select desktops such as XFCE or KDE to its own design guidelines and supplements them with MX tools. In addition, the MX project provides very detailed and well-maintained documentation. The detailed and lovingly prepared documentation alone is a unique selling point for MX Linux. It is not yet clear when MX Linux 22 will be released. Since MX Linux is built on top on Debian Stable, a release in the second half of the year could be likely, otherwise MX Linux 22 will be a candidate for the 2024 contribution. The elementary OS project has been working on version 7 since early 2022, which is based on Ubuntu 2204. The most obvious innovation so far are new icons in the Pentium desktop. The founding dispute at the beginning of 2022 and the resulting departure of Cassidy James Bleed seems to wide heavily on the project in terms of resources. Wayland support is still completely lagging. X11 is still a standard. The features for Pentium Desktop were added deleted, so the bottom line is that the Ubuntu LTS substructure will be raised from 2004 to 2204. When Elementary 07 will be released is unknown. Originally, it was already expected in the second half of 2022, but the project does not give any specific information about the release date. Therefore, the release date for Elementary 07 should be in this year. Maybe you would like to use an Apple Silicon-based MacBook Air with Linux. But with the change to the Apple Silicon architecture, the change from Intel to RAM was heralded. Most Linux distros are still based on classic 64-bit architecture. If you have a Silicon Mac like me, you cannot simply install Debian or Ubuntu. But something is happening. One of the current leading distros in this area is Asahi Linux. Although the project is still in the development phase, the advantages achieving through reverse engineering are extremely remarkable. The installation process is now very convenient. 
Hardware support keeps getting better, but the distro is still in development. Nevertheless, I am very excited to see what will happen at the front in 2023. So Asahi Linux is high on my radar because I plan one day to put Linux on my MacBook Air, but I won't replace Mac OS there until Linux is mature and stable for it. You may ask why are no rolling distros here listed? Because they usually didn't publish any fixed versions, with the exception of Manjaro, but these usually serve to draw attention to it from time to time. Anyone who has installed Manjaro and refreshes it regularly always gets the latest Manjaro packages available anyway. Accordingly, you don't stay on an older Manjaro version, but are taken directly to the latest available version. This is why I didn't include it explicitly. Of course, you can also look forward to continuously fresh packages from distros such as OpenSUSE, Tumbleweed, Solos, Arch, EndeavorOS, ArchCraft, Manjaro, Garuda or Arco Linux. These are only named as representative for all rolling distros. If I listed all rolling distros here, it would be an endless loop. I think you get what I mean. System76 will probably release a first preview version of its newly developed Cosmic Desktop in Rust in 2023. But I wouldn't expect any new version of POP based on Ubuntu STS versions this year. That was already initiated with the absence of POP OS 22.10. They concentrate on the development of the Cosmic Desktop and for the current LTS version POP OS 2204 selectively backported packages should be provided. The resources of developers are not unlimited and are used in a target-oriented manner at that time. So the LTS version of POP will be significantly upgraded in the future and I suspect that POP OS 2404 will then be the first version that comes with the new Cosmic Desktop. Then GNOME Shell will be replaced if no serious showstoppers are found during the test phase of the Rust Cosmic Desktop. For the reason started, I don't think we will see a POP version based on Ubuntu STS in 2023. Instead, certain components could be backported from the Ubuntu STS versions and thus provided in POP 2204. This is the way. KDE Neon is based on Ubuntu LTS and always brings the latest KDE Plasma packages. So it shouldn't be surprising if the existing KDE Neon version based on Ubuntu 2204 continues to receive the latest and greatest KDE desktop. With the release of Ubuntu 2404 LTS, a completely renewed KDE Neon version comes with a slightly delay in 2024. So this development is not unusual for KDE Neon. Stable Ubuntu LTS base with the latest KDE Neon Plasma interface. Every two years after the release of a Ubuntu LTS version, a new KDE Neon version comes out. That will be the case again in 2024. The candidates that are in the pipeline are promising. Above all Debian 12 because that will be the basis for many distros based on it such as Q4OS, Oracle Linux, IMAX Linux, LMDE etc etc etc. We will be probably see the last leap version of OpenSUSE that is based on SLE. Whether it's time to say goodbye to leap in general or how exactly things will continue, there should be more information this year. Of course, not all expected are static release versions based on Debian or Ubuntu, but the two distros mentioned are probably the biggest foundations for forks and play a very big role in the area. But we can also expect two Fedora versions which bring us to the latest technology and advanced the overall development with GNOME on the Linux desktop. I assume we can also expect new versions of the big desktops like GNOME Shell or KDE Plasma. I mentioned Cinnamon already at Linux Mint. It was broadly enough to collect the distros. For reason of time I won't break it down further into the individual desktops. Just know that there is also something coming in addition to the distros. What distros are you looking forward to in 2023? If I forgot something, please write it in the comments. I'm excited to see what you come up with. I'm excited also to see what's come on on distros this year. Of course, I will test the distros and present them to you. So stay tuned for what's coming. Thanks for the kind attention. 
If you want to see my videos in the future, now is a good time to subscribe to my channel for free. Doesn't cost you anything, but helps both of us. I would like to say thank you in advance. Take care until the next video. Bye.